Hello and welcome to another video here at AV Forums. This time we're talking about dynamic metadata. Now you might be thinking, what exactly is dynamic metadata? Well, in HDR, the content is delivered using metadata. This is basically information that is included when the content is created and graded uh, in the studio, so that when it's being sent to the TV, the TV knows how to display it. This metadata includes information relating to the black level, so it could be zero nits or normally 0.05 nits, and it also includes the peak brightness, um, uh, currently about 1,000 nits or sometimes 4,000 nits of peak brightness. Now, when we're talking about static metadata, that information is included for the entire film. So the whole film is encoded with two numbers, basically, the black level and the peak brightness. Now, obviously, you realize that during a film, there are scenes that are darker and brighter than others. It goes from a dark scene to a bright scene and so on. And not the whole film is going to be at 1,000 nits or 4,000 nits, for example, depending on how it was encoded. That is a bit of an issue, particularly with less capable displays, because they aren't necessarily able to deliver the 1,000 nits, and they definitely won't be able to deliver 4,000 nits, so they have to do what's called tone mapping, which is to take this content and then transpose it to the capabilities of the display itself. Now, the problem is, when you're dealing with static metadata, you've only got these two numbers for the entire film. And what that can mean is that certain scenes are maybe too dark, because the peak brightness number is 1,000 nits, but the display can only deliver 600 nits, and it's got to bring everything down to that 600 nit level. The result is a less than optimal HDR experience. And the solution to this problem is dynamic metadata, because the idea behind this is you actually change those two numbers going from scene to scene. So the black level probably won't necessarily change that much, but the peak brightness definitely will from one scene to the next. And so by including this information with the actual content, the TV can then map it much more accurately, and you get a much better experience in terms of HDR, something that's much closer to what was intended by the content creators. Where dynamic metadata particularly comes in useful is for less capable displays, because if you've got a TV that can do 1,000 nits and 100% of DCI P3, then obviously it can just show that content that was graded using um, 1,000 nits as it was actually graded. There's no need for any tone mapping at all. Obviously, if content's graded at 4,000 nits, then there is tone mapping required even on the very best TVs currently available in terms of HDR. So, dynamic so metadata has a lot of actual real advantage here, and it can deliver a much more enjoyable and much more precise HDR experience. There are currently two versions of dynamic metadata available. There is HDR10+, Plus, which is open source and royalty free, and there is Dolby Vision, which was obviously developed by Dolby and requires licensing fee. Um, depending on which manufacturer you choose, they will either support one or the other. And as far as I know, no manufacturer currently supports both. In terms of content, well, HDR10 Plus will be used uh, on some streaming services like Amazon, for example. It's not currently part of the Blu-ray specs, although the plan is to add it. As far as Dolby Vision is concerned, well, that's actually got quite a lot of support already. It's used by Amazon and Netflix. It's also on Ultra HD Blu-ray, as included in the specs, and there are already discs available for most of the major studios apart from 20th Century Fox, which is primarily supporting HDR10+. So there you go. That's the night metadata. Hopefully you found this um, video useful. And if you have, then please like and subscribe. And don't forget you can find more news, reviews, articles, and videos like this at avforums.com, Europe's largest home entertainment community. Thanks for watching.